People often ask me, you're a black dyslexic kid from a broken home in London. How come you're so interested in space? And I think it's because of a number of things. The first one is the clangers. Um, I fell in love with the clangers when I was probably about three years old and they live out in space. And I saw, I wanted to go and visit them. And also at the time I was growing up, um, people had just landed on the moon and uh, a space race was going on. So it was in the news all the time. So um, there was an attraction there. But I'm um, looking um, further uh, as I was growing up, um, I think being uh, a black kid in London, London is very multicultural. But when I went to school, I often felt I didn't really fit in. I wasn't, um, I wasn't really a proper Nigerian because I'd never been there. And my relatives were saying, Maggie, you're a lost Nigerian. Uh, but when I went to school, um, and if I said I was British or English, I'd say, you're not British, you're black. And so I felt I didn't really fit into either camps. And space was that wonderful thing that transcended all of that. Because when you look at the planet Earth from space, there were no countries, there were no boundaries, we're just one people. And there were also wonderful programmes like Star Trek, where people from lots of different countries were all battling the aliens. And I really fancied that. <laughs> well, my parents were very keen, especially my dad, on education. Education, education, education. Um, I think one of the main reasons was because um, my dad and my mother they both thought that perhaps if they had been born in England, they could have achieved so much more than they, 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 they actually did. And so they wanted me, the first child born to them in this country, to, to, to achieve as much as possible. You know, the world was out there. England was a land of opportunity, so I should be able to achieve whatever I wanted to achieve. My interest in science was uh, inspired, actually, by going to my father's workplace. He used to work uh, in a battery shop, basically, Axide batteries. And of course, they, uh, they didn't make the batteries there, but you could see all the components of the batteries, how you test them to see whether they've reached the end of their lives. There were acids and various other chemicals. You could measure the specific gravity of the fluid inside the battery and so on. So he also had a book at home called the Lead Acid Storage Battery, which I was able to study as best I, as I could, but it really got me hooked into science. So I was born in Nottingham uh, in 1970. My parents uh, came over from Jamaica in the 60s um, and essentially they were hard-working parents. My father was a picture framer and carpenter. And my mother was a nurse. Uh, my father left when I was quite young so I was raised uh, along with uh, four other siblings uh, by my mother and she was very much um, an advocate for education. In fact, she used to say that uh, education is your passport out of poverty. Um, I suppose I didn't really take it that seriously when I was younger, uh, but I, in hindsight, looking back, I can certainly see what she meant. I was born in Pakistan, in Islamabad, and I was brought up by my grandparents, maternal grandparents, and, uh, and an orderly who used to follow my brother and I around. I had a fairly interesting childhood. I was a bit of a tomboy. I um, wasn't into dolls, but more into climbing trees and playing baseball and cricket and riding bikes and um, I was into science fiction. My favourite TV programme was Star Trek and I remember doing lots of role plays with my little brother and, and other little neighbourhood boys. Basically, working as a scientist, as I am, is, is a brilliant job. It's very never um, one day is never the same as another I get to travel I get to meet all sorts of people I get to interact with the public yeah so you know for someone who started off on the council estate in London in the 70s yeah I think I've done okay